What is a survival myth that is completely wrong and could get you killed? When anonymous people on the internet proclaim to debunk commonplace survival strategies, always confirm or refute with multiple independent second-hand sources. As an army medic I can second this. Reddit and wilderness first aid makes me irrationally angry. I've heard people say that you have to shave your hair off after you've been exposed to radiation. Probably because they think radioactive dust will cling to your hair and make you sick. The problem is that shaving can create small cuts and abrasions. And you don't want that when you're covered in fallout. Just use shampoo, but not conditioner, and don't shave anything. If someone's having a seizure, do not put crap in their mouth. They're not gonna bite their tongue off, and now they are gonna choke to death. I mostly blame Black Hawk Down from propagating this misinformation. This one isn't very widely accepted, but it's in movies frequently. If you're stranded in a desert, moving during the day is alright. This will kill you. The risk of almost everything is higher during the day. Sunburn. Dehydration. Heat exhaustion. Heat stroke. Damage to your eyes. Seeing mirages that led on goose chases for a puddle of water. I believe mirages rarely, if ever, manifest the way they do in movies. Usually they're just a shimmer in the distance resembling the reflection of the sun off water. Traveling at night lowers or removes all of these risks, but does add a risk of disorientation and predators. But those are chance things whereas heat stroke is a sure thing if you travel during the day without enough water. Deserts also tend to get very cold in the night time though. And yeah, mirages are caused by the same crap as when you're driving on a long straight road and it see what looks like puddles way in the distance. Alcohol makes you feel warmer, but if you drink your veins become wider. This is why you feel warmer but also this is why you will freeze faster. If you drink enough alcohol while freezing to death, you'll at least feel alright for the rest of your life. Apparently some people think the best way to survive a wolf attack is to bend down and show the wolf you're submissive towards him and pose as no threat. If you do this, you're dead. The wolf will 100% kill you. Your best bet is to walk away without turning your backs on them, maintaining eye contact the whole way. If you look away or turn your back the wolf's killer instinct will kick in and it'll kill you. Don't make a lot of noise and aggressive movements towards a wolf the same way you do to a black bear because most likely it'll be seen as a challenge, not a threat. That if an animal eats a plant, it must be safe for humans to eat. Number. If you eat a berry or a mushroom just because a deer did you'll probably die. People who say this clearly don't know what koalas eat. Not related to the outdoors, but survival nonetheless. If someone is threatening to kidnap you, do not go with them. If you follow them, you're gone almost for certain. Scream for help. Run. Fight back if you can. Cooperation will only land you in a worse situation. Nah, sister. You're not getting me to no secondary location. Luckily this is not a common survival myth but it is so insane I think it's worth mentioning here. On one of Bear Grylls idiot shows he's trying to hike over land toward where he knows a town is. The terrain is extremely rough and it's time consuming to detour around several impassable obstacles. He shows the viewer how to shave several miles off this journey by using a flooded cave as a shortcut. He literally goes cave diving. One of the most dangerous things in the world you can do, regardless of the circumstances, without any equipment and portrays it as a helpful survival tip. A while back some kids drowned face diving. The pocket they came up for air in was a concentration of other gases. So even though they got out of the water they couldn't breathe. Do not ration your water too much. Your body needs at least one. 5 liter in normal circumstances, when you have enough food, are not cold or hot etc. There is no reason to drink less than this if you are lost other than to die from dehydration. They actually found people who died of dehydration with their fine water in their bottles. Just heard a saying for the first time recently, ration sweat not water, so sit your pretty butt down in the shade during the day and sip your water, within reason, and wait to be rescued. Hopefully people are looking for you because you told them where you would be. If someone has been bitten by a venomous animal or insect do not suck out the venom. It'll just make both people sick. Do not trust what you've seen on the movies. Suck their dong instead to calm them down. Then take them to the nearest hospital. I don't care what that idiot Bear Grylls says. 
Don't drink your urine if you're dehydrated. Seriously. It's true that there will be water in your urine, but you know what's even more prominent? Urea. It's a toxin. A waste that's leaving your body for a reason. Plus, if you're so dehydrated that you can actually muster up the courage to drink your own pee, there really isn't gonna be that much water to drink anyway. I mean come on. You're dehydrated. You really think your body is gonna produce water out of thin air? Bear Grylls was referring to his urine. You can order a bottle of it in a variety of flavors. Don't stand in doorways during earthquakes. It really won't help you. It's better to hide under a desk, table, bed, or any other piece of furniture that can protect you from falling debris. Drop. Cover. Hold on. You are most likely to be hurt by large heavy objects. And building codes in developed countries mean that the building itself is likely to withstand an earthquake. Protect yourself from shelves, breaking glass, falling light fixtures, and tall furniture. Cutting open a snake bite and sucking out the venom. The venom travels way too fast for that to make any difference, and the cut itself can become infected. No need for a tourniquet either. You don't want the venom concentrating in one area. Find a fence or some kind of man-made object and follow it. No. Stay freaking still. It's way easier for the search party to find you. That depends on whether or not you anticipate that someone will be searching for you. If you are solo through hiking something and you don't have regular check-ins, which isn't smart, it could be weeks before you are overdue, assuming you ever are. Since lightning never strikes twice in the same place, it's safe to stand in a spot during a storm where you know lightning has hit before. Plays lotto, loses, cries in the rain, gets thundershock twice. If you're getting kidnapped do not go to the second location, I repeat. Do not go to the second location. 95% of people who go to the second location never return. Do whatever IT takes. Even kill your kidnapper if you can. Run. Scream. Make yourself the most violent animal on earth. Aim for the eyes and poke as hard as you can. Choke them. Bite them. Kick the groin with all you have. Just do not go to the second location. Cooperation will kill you. Make yourself the most violent animal on earth transforms into a hippopotamus saw this on reddit so i don't know if it's totally wrong follow the river downstream when you're lost and you will find civilization at some point yeah but that point might be 100s of miles away every downstream path might not lead to civilization most of the time it's better to stay in the place you're in assuming you told someone where you were going before you left assess the situation and try to follow other alternatives before walking downstream you might get lost with no way to lead people to you. I've seen people mistaken aspirin and nitroglycerine when discussing what to do when someone is experiencing chest pain on Ask Reddit threads. There have been comments saying to chew aspirin and keep it in the mouth for absorption. For the record, you chew and swallow aspirin. It is nitroglycerine that needs to be held under the tongue to take effect. Any fast moving water is safe to drink. That's a big no no. It's safer than slow moving or standing water, but unless it's from a clear spring, this allows the ground to filter the water, or you have very recently covered the entire length of the river upstream from you there can still be contaminants that are really bad. For example, a dead animal within 15 meters, I believe, not 100%. Anyone who knows for sure please reply of the water can contaminate the water with its decomposing bits and juices. I don't know if this is even a survival myth or just something I feel like saying because it is relevant and I could see it being an instinctual reaction. But if someone tries to kidnap and get you into a car at gunpoint or knife point, do not let them. Do whatever you gotta do to get away and fight like heck. If they have to shoot you or stab you right there then so be it. It is much better than whatever the heck they will do to you once they get you in the car and in isolation, which will likely end in you being shot or stabbed anyways and somewhere that nobody will be able to help you. I got a copy of the worst case scenario board game as a gift. The correct answer to one of the questions about skydiving asserted that you wouldn't have to breathe mid-fall because at terminal velocity, the skin absorbs enough oxygen to survive. Obviously this is false, and it's apparently a myth that skydiving instructors tell students as a joke. I threw the game away before I accidentally memorized any other misinformation that wasn't as easy to spot. 
All I know is, if your parachute malfunctions then aim for some motherfucking trees. You will 100% want to hit a load of branches rather than come down on the ground or water. Not sure if it's total bulls, but the whole fetal position thing if you encounter a bear, it just seems like a good way to serve a bear its lunch. Brown bears will attack if they feel threatened, so if you show you are not a threat, lying down, they will leave you alone. Black bears however will attack if they are looking for food so you should display crazy dominance so they leave you alone and seek food elsewhere. You can drink seawater by mixing some normal water. Many people have tried this but even mixing it in a small ratio can make us seriously ill. I taught martial arts for years. Many people used to ask me, what would you do if someone held a gun to you when we would do gun knife training seminars, expecting some kind of answer like, use Krav Maga to get the gun from them and snap their neck with a karate chop. The real answer, you get away, or you get shot stabbed and die. Ask anyone who is good at martial arts and isn't trying to upsell you and your family on some Rick Squando. The best things taught to people in classes on how to survive these situations involve not being there in the first place, avoid the dark allies, rough bar scenes, parking far away from the building when you have a closing shift, or have someone with you, making sure you are loud, and obviously the victim uncomfortable. The best way to defend yourself is to have a gun on you and be trained to use it properly. There is no magic trick anyone can teach you to get out of a sticky situation and martial arts should be used as a last resort. Make sure they are looking at your face. It's much harder to kill someone if you have to look them in the eyes. Unless you are a complete psychopath. I'll just go live off the land. It's not the 18th century anymore. There are errant vast untamed tracts of wilderness teeming with wild game. Even in rural areas the game population densities are nowhere close to what they used to be when people used to actually live like that. It was only possible because there were two or three dozen animals to eat per person in any given region. Even then, people starved. The Lewis and Clark expedition comes to mind. There's weeks long periods in their journals where nobody can find enough to eat. Additionally, there is rabbit starvation, also known as Venetian poisoning or deer poisoning. Wild game is extremely high in protein, but almost totally lacking in fat or carbs. Without these your body can't break down all the protein and it starts to accumulate in your blood, eventually shutting down your kidneys and liver. Upvote, yet laughs in Alaskan. Drinking your own urine, that's just bad, and you're drinking your body's waste, you can drink it, but it'll make you more thirsty. How to actually deal with bear attacks. Black bear, in 99.999% of black bear interactions with humans, a loud noise will scare the black bear away. They only ever attack humans if they feel there's no other way to escape, or protect their cub. If that happens, back away slowly and maintain eye contact. Talk to it to make sure it knows you're there. Brown bear, these guys will ruin you if they're hungry or protecting a cub. If you're being charged by a brown bear, you'd better pray that you have multiple firearms being pointed and discharged at it, or are very close to your car. Polar bear, it's just a brown bear that's always hungry. Good luck. If you're not Australian you tend to believe the best way to deal with venomous snake bites is to suck the poison out, cut the wound to get the poison out and keep the person moving to keep them awake. This is all very, very wrong. First immobilize the person whole limb. Second wrap from the bite site all the way up and down the limb fairly tightly. Third keep the bitten person as still as possible and get help. Don't quietly go with someone if they threaten to hurt you if you don't. I was always taught. If anyone grabs you and says don't scream or I'll shoot stab you, scream anyways because getting shot stabbed is better than whatever they have planned for you. In a nuclear war, get into a cellar or central part of a building. Actually, you'll probably survive in the strong room space you're in, but the rest of the building will collapse on top of you. Best survival tip is to dig a trench outside, ideally closer to the nearest likely target than the building you'll be in. So the building collapses away from you, not into your trench. The reason being, an overpressure from most nukes will easily topple a building. But if you've even in a shallow trench, you'll be fine. Your soldiers did this in nuclear tests all the time. Teaching kids stranger danger with no exceptions mean they will hide from search parties and never ask for help. 
Teach them what situations are dangerous, and who is the best to ask for help. Never teach them every stranger is dangerous. Here's a few. You can't suck venom out of a wound, it will only give you an infection a little venom in your mouth. Must does not always grow on the north side of trees. It grows on the side with moderate to low sunlight. If a mama bear is with her cubs, do not try and scare her. If you appear as a threat not even a gun will stop her. Just try to look big and walk away casually. Punching a shark in the gills is harder than it looks. It's hard to land a solid punch underwater. You will not outclimb a bear or a big cat up a tree. Heck some of them can sprint up a T1. I share this every time this is reposted. Do not use your headdress like a hammer to break open a car window. If you need to break open a window to escape a car, jam the metal of the headrest into the door where the window recedes into it, and pull the headrest towards you. It's almost impossible to break a car window with an object like a headrest from a sitting position. It's really easy to pry it and shatter it from the lever action doing it this way. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.